Hello, and welcome to this video where we will explore molecules using sphingomyelin as sort of our test molecule. Um, a little bit of background on this, uh, sphingomyelin is a type of phospholipid, so we're going to find it in cell membranes, and it is especially prevalent in neuron cell, cell membranes. So, um, so here I've drawn uh, sphingomyelin two different ways. Um, we have the sort of skeletal model and then we have uh, this more filled in model. Um, and so each of these uh, lines that doesn't have anything to atta attach to it sort of denotes uh, carbon with hydrogens attached to it and uh, you know other things are sort of self-explanatory. So some basics on molecules, uh, they are made of atoms bonded together. And so in the case of sphingomyelin, we have 48 hydrogen atoms, 24 carbon atoms, 6 oxygen atoms, 2 nitrogen atoms, and 1 phosphorus atom. So. You know, these are our carbons, hydrogens are generally bonded to those, they're also bonded to this oxygen, oxygens here, phosphorus, nitrogens, etc. And so these, uh, these atoms are held together by covalent bonds. Uh, covalent bonds are when two atoms share electrons. Now, not all covalent bonds are equal, and in this particular molecule, we have four different kinds of covalent bonds. We have nonpolar, we have polar, we have single bonds, and we have double bonds. So let's talk about these different types of bonds. <coughs> uh, a nonpolar bond is when two atoms pull electrons about equally. Pull electrons equally. So um, this means that the two atoms in question have a similar electron affinity or similar electronegativity. And an example of this uh, is going to be the carbon carbon bond like right here right here or the carbon hydrogen bond like right here uh, we also have polar bonds this is when uh, one atom pulls uh, electrons harder than the other now this results in regions of more negative charge and more positive charge so some examples of this are going to be the oxygen-hydrogen bond, the oxygen-carbon bond, uh, or a nitrogen-carbon bond. So because one atom pulls the electrons more towards it, uh, that atom is going to have more negative charge around it. And so we want to uh, we want to make sure that we sort of note that negative charge. So, for example, this oxygen here has more negative charge than around it than the hydrogen does or than this carbon does because it pulls the electrons more. You can even see that I've written in the two lone pairs of electrons that this oxygen atom has. So we are going to write delta negative next to that. Next to this hydrogen here, we're going to write delta positive next to this carbon we're going to write delta positive what these mean is that this is a partial charge it's not a full charge like we see here on the phosphate group or here on this amine group it's just a partial charge it means that the oxygen is has more negative charge around it than the this hydrogen or this carbon now we also have single bonds um, so we represent these uh, by one line between the two atoms. So, for example, we have carbon-carbon or um, 
phosphorus, oxygen, um, and anywhere that we see a single line, uh, including these wedges or dashed lines, uh, that is a single bond. And we also have double bonds, and those are represented by two lines. Uh, here I've highlighted them, so we have one, two, three double bonds in this molecule. Uh, we have carbon, carbon, we have carbon, oxygen, and we have phosphorus, oxygen. Uh, these double bonds are stronger than single bonds, and they are uh, the two atoms are closer together here than they are here. The, the double bond just sort of makes the two atoms come closer together. Uh, another thing that we should talk about is charge. Um, now, I already mentioned charge density when I was talking about the polar, uh, polar covalent bonds. This is uh, an example of charge density here. Um, but in this molecule, we also have charged groups. This phosphate group is charged, and this amine group is charged. The phosphate group has a negative charge on it, so what we do is we write a negative sign in a circle. I would get in the habit of putting full charges in a circle like this just to really, uh, just to really show yourself that that charge is there, it is real, and uh, it's different from like these partial charges and also so you can keep track of it better. Um, this, uh, this methylamine group here has a positive charge and again it's a full positive charge so I write a plus sign and I put it in a circle to let myself know that that is a full positive charge. So uh, because this sphingomyelin molecule has both a negative charge in it and a positive charge, it is called a Zwitter ion. Zwitter ion. And that means that it has both a full positive charge and a full negative charge. And um, but it's still considered a neutral molecule because these two charges balance out. We wouldn't consider this to be a charged ion. It's a Zwitter ion. Um, so now that, uh, now that we've sort of talked about the different types of bonds and charges and stuff like that, uh, we can classify this molecule as having polar regions, nonpolar regions, and charged regions. So these here can refer to types of bonds, and, um, but they can also refer to qualities of the molecule itself. So we could say this section right here is nonpolar. This section here is polar. And this section here has charge. Now, the reason that we want to sort of talk about these, uh, talk about these reasons or regions or think about them, is that uh, it'll help us determine how this molecule will behave in water. And that's important because everything in life takes place in water. Water is sort of like the solvent of life. So, um, so yeah, this is, uh, and these principles we've talked about here can be applied to any, any type of, uh, any type of biomolecule. Uh, I did, the one type of bond I did not talk about is an ionic bond. Um, an example of that is between, uh, like table salt. So that's NaCl. So, uh, and an ionic bond, um, the, uh, the one atom, the chlorine in this case, takes the electron from the sodium, so that leaves the chlorine with a negative charge and the sodium with a positive charge. And uh, we call that an ionic bond as opposed to the covalent bond that we were talking about earlier. And here is my works cited.